Comics podcast, which is probably not possible. Or listen to another fucking podcast. Listen to Word Balloon. Listen to Comic Geek Speak. Listen to Ask Ask My Girlfriend. You know, there's millions of podcasts. I hope you stick around. Because we're gonna talk about some cool, interesting stuff. You know, including I might get rid of some old sound clips and songs and whatnot that I was because this is not my first time, my first round, my first rodeo. Um, back in 2013 when I wanted to, when I wanted to do this, my psych got worse. Um, I got sick. And I recorded some material, which, you know, I'm starting to find. And in the spirit of the um, G- uh, Jerry Duggan, Brian Paulson, Deadpool inventory issues. I'll be presenting some of that material 
every now and then. You know? I still try to find my voice. I still try to figure out what I want to do. But now that I know what I am, I am Blind Adam the Comic Pimp. I am awesome. And I have an awesome sauce family. And I thank you for inviting me into your lives. For being a part of the awesome sauce family. And for helping me live my dreams. You know? And so I was always told, do you. So we drink about and do. I do me. And we go cool, cool for Cocoa Pops. So I think I'm going to play some sound clips for five seconds. Robin Core. And then I'm going to get to the first topic of the app. Jackie, my brother Ron Warren, and I guess you Kathy, Kenny, um, and whatever the other two cats are. Uh, every cat they love.
Reagan. I couldn't have learned Braille without her. She was awesome. Reagan, CM, Grade Braille one. And that, that is what I want to get to the first topic I want to talk about. Because I have a challenge for Playboy Magazine, Penthouse Magazine, Sherry, um, Screw, not that Screw may not be around anymore. Um, and you don't magazine in the world, especially you, Playboy Magazine, who's been around for 60 years. Why? Oh, why? Has there never been a handicapped woman, whether it be a blind woman, a deaf woman, whatever the fuck, in your magazines? Now, you know, yeah, you remember, you just remember I said blind, deaf, crippled, no political correctness in this show, because that's what's wrong with America today. That's what's wrong with society today. We got rid of all the blind people, and we brought in these visually disabled... What the fuck is visually disabled, anyways? I was at the New York City Comic Con, at the Daredevil panel, and somebody referred to us blind people as visually disabled. What is visually disabled? Because no one asked my, I'm blind, and no one asked my permission that I wanted to be called visually disabled or impaired. You know, we have no more deaf people in America today. We got all these people who can't hear or are hearing impaired with sign language interpreters that look like play by mouth to me. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. We got no more cripples in America. What happened to all the cripples? We get the best parking spots at the mall. Now we have paraplegics or walking impaired or whatever the fuck that sh cutesy, ditsy, tooty fucking word is. I mean, I gotta quote the late, great, greatest comedian in the world, George Carlin. Just because you change the name of the condition doesn't change the fucking condition. Blind is blind no matter what word you put on it. At the end of the day, you can, you can call us a piece of shit all you want and make it look pretty, but at the end of the day, it's still a piece of shit. Testify! Not back to you, Playboy Magazine. Because I'm going to make two things. Two things. Two things. Two things. Two things. Two things. I had too much sugar and coffee and soda and all that shit, so I'm a little hyper today. As compared to other days when I do this show. I want to see all day, every day, 20, for as long as the Pizza Hut is open, buffet. I'm sick and tired of going into my Pizza, my pizza Hut, where there's a sit down, and I get there at 1.15 p.m. Why the fuck is your buffet open from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m.? An hour? Some people don't get a lunch, don't work at 12.30. I mean, what's up with that? If McDonald's can have all-day breakfast, Pizza Hut, you can have all-day buffet. Make it happen. Now, Playboy Magazine, you got to get a blind girl to be in your magazine. There are beautiful blind women in the world. Yeah, black out kind of girls. Blonde hair, blue tits. Whoops, no. They have blue tits, they're like mistake. Blonde hair, blue eyes, big tits, nice thighs. Type of girl that would knock out most guys. But there is there in America. 
There's totally blind women, and maybe they should try to seek Playboy out. Women, think of the fame. Think of the fame. Think of the fortune. Think of the new ride. You'll be the Jackie Robinson of adult entertainment. You'll be fully nude in Playboy magazine, and you'll get opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to become a spokeswoman and a, an ambassador for your for our people, for the blind, and you can open up doors and shit. That's all we have to do is take that first step and get a first girl in Playboy magazine. I want to see it done. I don't care if it's Wicked Entertainment. I don't care if it's Vivid. I don't care if it's Hustler Magazine, Cherry, Penthouse. Because Playboy, you done, you done good so far. You know that old joke, we only, we only get Playboy to read the articles? Well, when you're blind and you get Playboy in Braille, since they don't do the pictures in Braille, you only get the articles, blind people can say we really do read Playboy for the articles. Which really is the fucking joke. But now we have to go a step further, you Hefner. Holly Madison. Uh, Kendra Wilkerson. Couldn't think of the name for a second. Um, you know, Bridget, whatever her last name was, the one who, the one girl next door that everyone's forgotten about, falling off the face of the earth, selling real estate and shit. I, I, would, I would wreck Holly Madison's ass. I would just like, eat that like I need a slice of pizza. Just a fuck! I mean, it's A, this is A or me. Playboy has lost the careers of Marilyn Monroe. She was Norma G. And then she would pose nude in Playboy. You know, Bob Kane met, who created Batman, the character Vicky, Vicky Vale, um, the news reporter who was played by Kim Basinger in the 1989 Batman movies. Um, Vicky Vale was inspired by Marilyn Monroe. And Marilyn Monroe was in Playboy. Pamela Anderson, Playboy, if there wasn't Playboy, Playboy, Pamela Anderson would still be in Calgary, Canada, doing God's know what. You know, um, Scott Bale was, was, was the first American to bang, to, you know, to bang Pamela Anderson. And Pamela Anderson may be Canadian, but her tits are, are American made. All thanks to Playboy magazine. Now we have to get the Playboy magazine with someone who is a handicapped. And you may ask to all you p people who want to be pissed at me for not being political, for being not being politically correct and proud of it. Kiss my fat blind ass. No political correctness here on the Awesome Sauce Comics podcast today. Political correctness. We're handicapped. We're not physically challenged. We're not differently abled. What the fuck is differently? Everyone's differently abled. That's just a stupid fucking term that you politically correct, soft pussy. Cause we're, cause I, cause you know what? I think America's become a bunch of pussies. Yeah, I said it. You can send hate mail to comic VIP at Gmail. You can leave an angry voicemail at two zero one six seven five two one zero four. I don't care. As my daddy should say, this is my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. <clears throat> so I'm going to make this happen. We're going to get all day, every day, buffet at Pizza Hut. We're going to get a blind woman a Playboy. We're going to start getting ready political correctness. One stupid saying at a time. We're going to bring back America to its former glory. In the days of Ronald Reagan. In the days... Of Alice P. Keaton, of the days when America was paved with gold, and yet there's a land of opportunity in the streets. You, you, what, you know what I'm getting at. I need to take a break because I'm getting over emotion now.
I think you might want to stop the episode now because it's doing what it always does. You see, I, I don't. Oh, come on! I, this is, why is it always when I'm doing my best with the fucking show? I'll just re-record it. Yeah, I don't know if I can bring that in. I said, that's doing a full dog knocks in this way. I Motherfucker. If I, I, if I, I'm afraid I'm going to hit the wrong button now. I'm sorry about that, folks. It looked like it froze for a minute. That is the Teen Titans theme song from the classic, uh, you know, uh, two early 2000s cartoon starring my boy Greg Sipes. Hey, Greg, thank you for your interview at New York Comic Con. I'm going to try to see if I can do an interview with you sometime soon. I apologize. I thought that the computer was having an outburst because my computer likes to freeze when I'm recording stuff. Thank you all for, uh, you know, um, waiting with me. Uh, also, Tara Strong kills in that show as Tara. Um, I forget the rest of the voice cast, but that, that theme song is the top cartoon theme song to get a lap dance to. It's, you know, T-E-E-N T-I-T-A-N-S And that's going down, she keeps just being grinding, bumping, go bumping and grinding. Go boom, 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 boom. That Josie and the Pussycats is the second greatest cartoon theme song of all time to get a lap dance to. And by the end of the next week, I will have a top five cartoon theme songs to get lap dances to. Because that's what we're going to do. You know what? Uh, I also want to say that I recently watched Gotham. This week's Gotham was amazing. This week's Arrow was amazing. This week's Flash was amazing. Uh, Gotham? I... Tell, you, tell my boy Charlie over at Emergency Awesome. I don't think it was James Gordon being hardened or just going psychotic. I think he was grieving over the, the that cop Luke who died in the, the previous episode. Um, Scarified. Um, you know, he, he, the five and the five... It's, it was, he was in the anger part of the five stages of grief. Um, all the cops are. Uh, but I do like all the interaction between Gordon and Selena. And I think this episode of Selena Kyle basically take the, takes a lot, all the best of the Ed Brubaker run, the, you know, the classic Frank Miller version of the interpretation of Selena Kyle. Um, she, Selena Kyle is really not a villain. Uh, but she's really not a hero. She's a thief. She's the best thief in the world. You know, she she's amoral, which means she lives by her own moral cold. She, she she does what she you know, much as the beat of her own drummer, much like yours truly. You know, piss her off and she'll destroy you. Stay, but you know. But just like she really liked Bridget, so she was really trying to help Bridget. You know, and I, 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 I kind of like the fact that they were going out of their way to try to make you feel sympathetic towards Bridget in this. And I hope that we see that character again. Um, you know, Alfred is just a douchebag. But I, I do like the fact that, that, you know, you got, you know, Bruce Dayton and Silver. Silver Saint Cloud. Um, if you can't afford copies of uh, Detective Comics 470, her first appearance, pick up um, Why Didn't Ke My Book, written by my mentor, my boy Kevin P. Smith, um, Batman Why Didn't Jider number one through six, art by my other boy Walt Walter Comic Book Man Flanagan, uh, which is actually the sequel to uh, Batman Cacophony. You know, uh, one of the best, so, 
modern uh, Silver St. Cloud stories out there. Testify! Um, I also love what they did with Firestorm uh, this week. You know, I had no problem with it being a, with this Jackson kid. I, it, this is the best on-screen interpretation of Firestorm since the old Super Friends cartoons. Um, I wish Robert Amell all the best in his, uh, you know, movie career. I hope he gets to come back to play in the, you know, in the sandbox. Uh, you know, I like the fact that they did use a classic Firestorm villain, even though he, it did kind of look, it, it wasn't really, like, wowed. I hope we don't have to ever see that character again for a while. I love all the interaction between Jackson and, uh, Caitlin Snow. Uh, I really, really love what they're doing with, that they, and they gave Iris her own story this, this year. I really think, you know, you know, they're definitely going with the New 52, um, interpretation of Wally West. That it is, that her, that it is Iris's brother. Um, I, I, it was a nice little, the disease they gave, McGregor Syndrome. Which is a, is a total rip on the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, Batman, and Robin. Uh, but, uh, hey, Amanda Pays is a gilf. Alright? I said it. Amanda Pays, at the age of 60 something, is sexier now than she was in 1991. Oh, my brother, testify! Amanda Pays is smoking hot! She was smoking hot back in the original Flash when John Leslie Ship was playing Barry Allen. You know, and, Jer and uh, John Leslie Ship has not had that much screen time as Henry so far this season. But, you know, hopefully we'll see him more. I'm hoping that he is, he's not Professor Zoom from Earth 2. Uh, well, I'm hoping that maybe we'll see a parallel world if we're going to go with the full multiverse. Maybe we will get that world where the 1990 Wad Flash series and this Flash series coexist. Maybe we, we also get this uh, rumored Tom Willing Smallville cameo. You can connect all the other DC Universe live action shows throughout the years into this universe, you know, through the multiverse if you really want to. That would be awesome. So. You know, uh, except for Birds of Prey. You know, the uh, Ashley Scott Birds of Prey show from 2003. It's cool. It's awesome. But it wasn't the best thing in the world. Just a thought. Yeah. And Arrow? This is my theory. I think that uh, Quentin Lance is going to die by the end of the season. They keep on showing this funeral. Um... And I think that whole scene where it, that, that, that interpretation where, uh, you know, Ali's like, why don't you just stick around um, Dark, Damien Dark and this, you can work, you can be an, an informant to me. Uh, you know, uh, thing is really going to, he's, he's going to bite them because the way I see it, Lance is the only expendable member of the team. You know, Lance, Yes, it is, you know, based on Drake Lance, the Diana's father from the comics, uh, who died in uh, Secret Origins, I think it's issue 30-something. Uh, but, uh, you know, because um, even, even Felicity is based on a Firestorm villain called Bite, and... <laughs> But I think Felicity's too, too, too loved by the Phantom, and especially the, the, the shippers, to really, to really, really, uh, not, to save her ass. They, they won't call off Donald. I think Diggle's too beloved, even though Diggle, they did bring him into the comics. His first comic book appearance is Arrow number one. And his first DC continuity appearance in the New 52 is Green Arrow number 17. He was a big part of that outsider, that outside war story. Outsiders war. 
Thea is uh, actually, even though she was orig originally for the t uh, TV, she was based on the Mia Dern Speedy that Kevin Smith created. And Judd Winnick uh, improved upon. Um, you know, so I really think it's Lance is gonna he's gonna die by the end of the season, unfortunately. And I like Paul Blackthorne in that role. It's so all my awesome soft family in the Louisville, Kentucky area. Go to Wizard World, Wizard World, Kentucky if you're an Arrow fan. I'm gonna see. Maybe I might just take Mega Bus there because you got Stephen O'Mell. Katie Cassidy, uh, John Ben Roman, Paul Blackburn, all at the same Wizard World. That's awesome. I mean, that, that's an arrow autograph meet and greet. That's just awesome sauce. I might just have to go there. That's at the happening in Louisville, Kentucky. Go to the Wizard website. November 6th, 7th, and 8th. I might just take a bus. Get Ralph Cranston in the motherfucking case and shit. And does anyone know what's going on with this Teen Titans show for TNT? So I haven't heard anything about it in a while. Hope it's still being done. As we testify! Let's make sure we're still recording. Yeah! Roman quarter. Roman quarter, man. Stop mocking me! This is all wrong. On your future stage. Really? Dan Coop, from the Office of Sonic Podcast, is to you. Here at the world famous Forest Service Club in the heart of your city. For your future entertainment. The one, the only, the Indian Award winning Captain Wayne. The point of the stage is down, 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 down. It's a good for film. It's a kid. It's the world to the school.
For anyone who doesn't know who the name is, that is Saxon, one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all time. Um, that is Denim and Lover, off the album Denim and Lover. That's the first heavy metal album I ever bought with my own money. Um, I, I wish if anyone can help me find that on MP3 or YouTube or CD. I, I'll pay. I'll pay. I'll pay good money. Just email comic VIP at Gmail. And I'm gonna give five items that I'm, I'm willing to pay really decent money. Um, two of these items, like the Saxon Denim and Liver, uh, either it's CD or MP3. That's for my personal collection. Using for clips here on the show. Just me buying a piece of my childhood. It was the first album I ever bought with my own money. Just because I had a cool album cover and that that that. Get on another song. It's just awesome. Uh, great song to get a lap dance to. It scores West 28th Street between 10th and 11th Avenue. Scoresny.com. Um, and after you go there, you, you can buy some comic books at www.midtowncomics.com, the official comic book store of the Awesome Sauce Comics podcast in the heart of New York City. I am a, I am a, 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 an affiliate sublet of, of them. I think it's for all their love, all their support. You know, I can't do what I do without Midtown Comics. 212-302-8192. Tell Andrew Cohen, Ted, the whole staff, Blind Adam sent you. www.midtowncomics.com. Thank, I thank them for sponsoring me. Uh, <coughs> you know... I'm going to end this episode now because I'm losing my voice and I'm losing my steam. And just know that I love you guys. I thank you for helping me each and every day on this journey. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I love you all. And thank you for all the love and support. One foot in the gutter, one fist in the goal. Too hot to handle, too cold to hold. Blind Adam out. Awesome souls. button. Stop recording button. Enter.